Hello, good afternoon. Hello everyone, welcome back to our webinar series. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. We are streaming live here in Cavite and it's a great Wednesday afternoon. In spite of the challenges that we are still facing due to COVID-19, where at the moment Cavite is part of the so-called NCR plus bubble, is once again under general community quarantine. Now that most of us are observing work from home arrangement, it is better to always stay at home and observe the basic health and safety measures. This afternoon, Join us for another two hours of relevant discussion as we continue on enhancing our teaching capacity through online learning. Welcome to our eighth webinar series. I am Roel Paras, the Training and Development Officer of De La Salle University Das Marinas, and I am with Dr. Grace Sala Mejia, Chair Tourism Management Department, and we will be your host, moderator for today's learning session. Before we start our program our event please allow me to present some rules and reminders this webinar is recorded to participate in the question and answer portion you may use the q a chat box when asking questions please introduce yourself and the institution you represent For the registration, if you have not yet registered, please register using the link. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in DLSUD's learning management system. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources, give feedback, and your e-certificate. You will receive an email that contains your username and password. You only need to register once for the entire webinar series. Now to get your certificate, again, watch out for the access code, which will be showing at the end of our webinar. Log into dlsudace.edu20.org, go to courses, click enroll, input the access code. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to profile. Now, here are some tips for our attendees who are encountering audio problems. Check your device audio if it is turned on. If you are using earphones, headset, check if it is properly connected. If it is still not working, use the built-in device speaker. Check your internet connection. Restart your internet and or your device if needed. Exit the event and rejoin again. Check if audio is working on other applications. If you are not using the MS Team application, we suggest you download and use it to participate in the webinar. And if you're using laptop, go to MS Teams profile, setting devices, and select the appropriate audio device speaker. Now to formally start our webinar this afternoon, let us have our opening prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. 
St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Friends, our dear participants, our national anthem. much. Once again, good afternoon po sa ating lahat and welcome to our webinar entitled Managing Online Learning. As part of our academic collaboration with the Commission on Higher Education, this learning engagement is brought to us by De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research through the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. Before we move on to the next part of our of program, I would like to remind everyone later on we'll be playing the game will of names so we need your names and the school that you are representing so please find the link posted in our chat box like in our live um, chat and then access the link um, kindly uh, accomplish that particular survey so that we'll be able to participate our activity later on so once again please access the link and then um, accomplish the the form so that you will be able to participate our activity all right so at this point, to welcome us all and to give his message, let us welcome the Dean of the College of Education and the Co-Chair of the Faculty Engagement Committee of DLS Yudas Marinas, Dr. Pat Alcartado. Good afternoon, Dr. Pat. Good afternoon, Sir Well. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, Please. po. Maraming salamat po. So, we are now on the 8th of the webinar series. And we have gone through the seven webinars and we are still here open to learn despite of its virtual mood of seminars. As I reviewed the evaluation of its webinar, it shows that we are learning from its webinar despite of some technical problems we encountered. De La Salle University Das Marinas with the Commission on Higher Education continues to share what we learn and experience to other faculty of different schools and universities in Region 4A and other regions. All of us, we need to address different challenges of the online learning. A year ago, we were surprised, challenged, but we had to face the online learning. And I believe that we did our best in order that we still give quality education to our students. Yes, we made it. But we do not stop learning, especially on the skills on how to manage online learning. And this is our topic today. We invited a very experienced, hands-on in managing online learning, a very competent one to share her knowledge, skills, and experiences on managing online learning. With this, I would like to welcome you all 
to De La Salle University Das Marinas webinar on managing online learning. Good afternoon and thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pat. Maraming salamat po. This online engagement will not be possible and successful without the support and cooperation of our dear administrators, faculty, and staff members from our participating schools and organizations. And now to acknowledge our participating schools, state and city colleges, and universities, prior, private higher education institutions, and other organizations, let us have a quick roll call of our participating schools. We welcome our participants from Abra State University, uh, Institute of Science and Technology, Asian International Institute of Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, Asian Institute of Science and Technology, Arnold Jensen Catholic Mission Foundation Incorporated, Batanga State University, Bulacan State University, Bulihan Integrated National High School, Calamba Doctors College, Capi State University, Caritas Don Bosco School, Cavite State University, City College of Tagaytay, and Coleo de Montenlupa. We'd also like to acknowledge and welcome our friends from Coleo San Agustin, the Cup of Wisdom Academy, De La Salle College of St. Benil, De La Salle Ipa, De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, of course, De La Salle University Das Marinas, Divine Word College Ordaneta, DMMC Institute of Health Sciences, Don Bosco Technical College, Mandaluyong, Pilamer Christian University, Roja City, La Consolacion College, Bacolod, Laguna State Polytechnic College, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, and Madalag National High School, Aklan. We would also like to say hi and like to welcome our friends who are from Madre Guidita Martelli School, Manila Adventist College, Marvelous State Academy of Bacoor, Mindoro State College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Occidental Mindoro State College, Rizal College of Taal, San Juan de Dios Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College Recolectos de Cavite, St. Jude College, and um, Santa Isabel College, Manila. Likewise, we would like to say hi and welcome to our participants from St. Anthony de Carmeli Academy Incorporated, University of Negros Occidental Recoletos, University of Perpetual Health System, Dalta Molino, University of the Cordilleras, Bicol University, Isabella State University, Don Mariano Marcos, Memorial State University, Open University System, and Sisters of Mary Danux. And of course, we have our friends and would like to welcome them from University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Jose Tamayo Medical University, Surigao del Sur State um, University, MOL Magsaysay, Maritime Academy, Emilio Aguinaldo College, St. Thomas Beckett Academy, and Pandan Bay Institute Incorporated. We'd also like to acknowledge and of course welcome the people and friends behind uh, the Commission on Higher Education for this partnership, the Department of Education, and of course, DepEd Cavite. Special mention to some of our participating schools who are joining us right now, Eugenio Cabezas National High School and Bonavista Elementary School. So once again, we would like to welcome all our participants. Thank you for joining us in this um, eight webinar series, and we hope that we'll be, you will be joining us in the succeeding series of webinars that we'll be having. All right, so at this point, I think we are now ready. This is the most important part of our of our engagement today. So to to introduce our resource speaker, may I request my co-host and co-moderator, Dr. Grace Salamehia, the chair of the Tourism Management Department, to introduce our first speaker. Ma'am Grace, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Well, yes, please proceed. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, who is going to talk to us about managing online learning. Our speaker joined Cyber Learning to help customers and partners in the ASEAN region achieve organizational learning objectives using the company's learning platforms, such as NEO for schools, Matrix for businesses, and Indie for individuals and entrepreneurs. 
She has more than a decade of teaching experience as assistant professor of marketing and advertising in De La Salle University, Des Marinas. She's, she also served as educational technology coordinator and director of the Center for Innovative Learning Programs in the same university for five years. Our speakers' corporate experiences include marketing and organizational development roles in the educational management, insurance, retail, and e-commerce industries. She is currently a co-founder of the National Digital Educator Society and a former president of the Philippine Learning Society. Our speaker graduated with Bachelor of Arts degree in Mass Communication, majoring in Journalism, cum laude, and a Master's degree in Technology Management from the University of the Philippines. She is also a board certified teaching professional. So please join me in welcoming the Director of Customer Success of Cypher Learning Incorporated, Ms. Arlene Roa Awale. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, Ms. Arlene. Yes. Yeah, please allow me to share my screen. Okay. Yeah, so can you see my screen? Yes, Ma'am Arlene. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, good afternoon. So, today I'll be talking about managing online learning. Uh, seems to be a very, very broad topic, like so much to cover. But uh, I was thinking about the many reflections that I have had over the past year about how I've been uh, communicating and working with different organizations in this particular job of managing online learning, given our current scenario. So that informed part of uh, what I'm sharing with you today uh, in my role and also understanding the role we have as teachers, but also as a learner and also as a parent because uh, my kids are also learning fully online right now. So for today, um, our objective is to really look at. I know we've been so immersed with so many things in the pandemic, but I think we also need to reflect, give also time to reflect on what's happening in our current learning situation and identify factors that contribute to student well-being, reflect deeper on technology implementation, how we're doing it, and then think about designing more engaging learning activities. So given the hour, we want this to be a little bit fun. Um, we've asked you to log in, uh, join in the submit your name. We'll have a raffle. So I'll be asking Sir Roland to, to draw a name. And then when your name is called, I, I will be asking a question that's related to our discussion. So we hope to make it a little bit more interactive instead of, you know, just your typical webinar. So some uh, I'll be giving away what we call the COVID care kit. I don't know if we can see it. Para ko nagla live selling. <laughs> so yeah. So the COVID care kit has a waterproof bag. Di ko po siya binibenta. It's from Cypher Learning. It has a thermometer, a face mask uh, with a filter. So something that we believe will be helpful for you as well. So the we 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 want to have ten winners of that, and then ang grand prize natin will be a 500 peso gift certificate to Lazada. Uh, hindi po sila sponsor, we'll just give it to you. It's a winner uh, for online shopping kasi I know that every, every everything we're doing right now is all online. So we hope you can participate actively. So are you ready? Okay, so maybe the first thing that I want to ask is how are you feeling today? How are you feeling? So if it's possible, I posted the question in our live event Q&A. You can post a reply uh, using an emoticon or maybe a single word. Is that possible for them to reply in the live Q&A? So you just um, think about how are you feeling today? Uh, 
parang nahihiya po sila. Ah, sig- wala pa masyado nagre-reply. So yung ano ba yung mga sa online selling, yung uh, pang 7 <laughs> magre-reply. <laughs> will get a prize. Pwede ba 'yon? The seventh uh, person. So we just want to see how you're feeling today. Loaded. I super true. Po. I think everyone is feeling that way. Um, excited. Anonymous. I hope to meet you, Mr. or Miss Anonymous. Loaded. I think everyone is feeling that way. Excited. It's positive. No, it's nice to hear somebody is very positive. You're feeling great. Excited. See, Miss Pang ilan na siya. <laughs> Yung pang seven ang uh, kuha ng uh, price. One, two, three, four, five, six. I hope you can write your name. Yeah, surviving. It's something very true for all of us. Yes, so yung pang seven natin, siya yung anonymous motivate. <laughs> Sir Paul, can you just, uh, if you can, just uh, reply to the person who commented who is qualified to win the prize. So congratulations. I hope you keep participating. So I just wanted to check in. So that's something that we can also do with our learners. I'm sure at the start of every class, we try to check in on how they're feeling. Because I've noticed, um, hindi na po natin, marami ng schools na hindi pwede mag-require na naka-on ang video ng bata. Do you agree? Ah, sorry. Kasi ay bala. Akala ko tinatanong mo Paul yung name ko eh. <laughs> so, uh, simply because of the concern for internet connection, right? So, may mga schools or may mga teachers na, yeah, it's okay if you're connected with your videos off. But it's hard for us to see how they're really feeling. I've noticed my kids, no, both of them, um, they prefer not to show their faces on, on camera when they're in class. But it's hard for us to really gauge how people are feeling. So um, one one way of doing that is doing a check in. So yeah, surviving. I know um, it's different. No times are different. It's been a year, but um, I think yun nga eh, we have all different kinds of emotions, and we'll talk about that later. So dahil lahat tayo ay hindi pa nakakalabas, this is actually an invitation to go swimming. So I'm, I've noticed your background is sir well is the lake. So hindi po tayo diyan magsi-swimming. So uh, I I'm, I'm not sure kung sino na nakapag-swimming sa inyo but I think this is one of the things that we miss the most, the ba? Going to the beach, going swimming, but you later on you'll find out why this is something that's very relevant. But the next concept that I'll be introducing to you is something that's called the SAMR model. So the SAMR model is uh, a model of technology integration and adoption uh, developed by Dr. Ruben Fentadura. So here's a short video that I hope you can hear the sound that I will play. Okay, we all know that using technology in school can help students learn. But how can our teachers reflect on how effectively they're using technology? Well, that's what this model is for, the SAMR model. It's kind of like a Bloom's taxonomy for educators. It was created by this guy, Dr. Ruben Puentadora, who believes that using technology allows us to think differently and perform new tasks. After all, if we have today's technology, then why teach like we did 20 years ago? There's four different levels and two different sections in SAMR. Let's take a look at the first level, substitution. This is where the technology used acts as a direct substitute. Let's take the task of persuasive essay writing. I could write an essay by hand, or I could type an essay using the basic features of a word processing program. The task is the same, and there's no functional change. The technology is being used as a substitute. Lots of teachers start out at this level, but don't worry. Because substitution is not a bad thing, even the best teachers visit this level from time to time. The next level is called augmentation. This is where the task is still the same, but the tech allows for some sort of functional improvement. So instead of writing our persuasive essay on paper, we could use a program like Google Docs. With this software, the task is still the same, but the unique features of a collaborative document provide some functional improvement. In both these levels, the technology is used to simply enhance a lesson. This technology may make tasks more efficient, 
but it's not likely to make a big difference in future outcomes. Most learning takes place above the line. And it starts with modification. Here the technology is used to provide a significant task redesign. So instead of simply writing an essay, a student could publish a WordPress blog using text, embedded videos, pictures, and other web links to convey their argument. The audience is no longer just the teacher either. It's the entire world. People from anywhere with an internet connection could review or comment on their writing, allowing for deeper analysis. The final level and the ultimate goal of technology integration is redefinition. Here, the technology allows for the creation of new tasks that were previously inconceivable. Instead of writing that essay, students could now create and publish a digital storytelling project to argue their writing with multimedia. Plus, Just like the blog, through publishing this movie to the world, it allows for other people to comment and analyze their message. So the heart of the assignment is still the same, but the technology allows them to engage in a new, more involved task that's otherwise not possible. At these levels, learning is transformed through the use of technology. When we are more engaged and involved, significant improvements in learning are more likely to take place. Different people have different ideas about SAMR. Some think that SAMR is like a ladder that you climb. You start at substitution and work your way up to redefinition. Others think each level is like a swimming pool that you swim in or visit from time to time throughout the school year, and that's okay. Because no matter the interpretation, the real power of the framework is that it promotes reflective teaching in the classroom. What you do, why you do it, and how it helps learning. By thinking about the different levels, teachers can focus on designing digital learning experiences that will help improve student outcomes. See, the thing about SAMR is this. It's not the type of tech tool that defines the level. It's how the individual teacher uses it in their lesson. So whether you're substituting or redefining learning, remember the ultimate outcome for integrating technology should be simple. Maximizing, maximizing student, student success. success. Want more information on SAMR? Check out these links. Okay, so. Okay. So, SAMR might be something that you have encountered before. I'm sure you've attended a lot of webinars that have uh, talked about it, but that video was actually done by a, a pair of students and is also a good example of how students can demonstrate application of learning. And also, it's an example of redefinition. Eh? And they were studying about um, education, pedagogical approaches. The uh, the outcome that was uh, that they created was a video that they shared with the world. So that's an example of redefinition. So when we think about, I think part of the struggle that teachers have in terms of learning how to use technology, uh, malaking part we labigla tayong lahat, de ba? I I hope I am sure you agree na. A lot of us weren't really prepared to do fully online. Even yung mga people like uh, a lot of us who have been teaching for many, many years. So it's it's really a big part of the adjustment and people are calling it something uh, emergency response teaching or emer uh, emergency remote teaching where it's simply most probably you could consider it as a substitution level of some are. However, if we want to be more uh, efficient in maximizing the use of online tools because we have no choice at the moment we have to go deeper but the struggle is of course learning how to use technology in in a better way that is more relevant to learners so to concretize this i i, I phone in a friend who can share a little bit about his journey through summer can can i ask uh, sir roland ruben to talk about how he did SAMR for some of his classes. Hi, yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Ayan, okay. SAMR, when I learned about SAMR, I immediately wanted to try it in my classes. So, yung, uh, yung first na pwedeng gawin, ang pinakamadaling gawin, substitution. Okay, palitan mo lang naman yung... Mani, yung tools na ginagamit mo. Kung dating paper and pen, ngayon naman ay ano na, yung word, online, ayan, ganyan, or email, ayan, sharing of documents. And then, uh, 
Abang ano, uh, after the substitution, I tried looking for activities na pwede ko may apply yung augmentation, modification, and redefinition. Ang pinaka mahirap gawin yung redefinition kasi you have to come up with something that was not done before. Ayan. So ngayon, uh, pero with the platforms na available for us online, Ang mag, pinakamadali na ma-share yung output ng mga bata ay YouTube. Kasi ito lang inihingi ay YouTube videos. Pero aside from the YouTube videos, na-discover ko na we can also share yung blog. So, students can write blogs para may share nila sa much wider audience. Sa, sa klasiko sa art appreciation, lalo na nung first STEM, Ang ko yung SA, yun yung thumb R. Pero not every activity is a redefinition. So may mga activities ako na substitution, may activities ako na augmentation, and then modification yun. Pinaka-final output namin is a redefinition. So I asked them to gather all their artworks in a platform, for example, a Wix site or... Um, in stream if they want a video or a uh, anong tawag doon? Yung <laughs> the word escapes my mind. Pero yung gather mo lahat sa isang uh, lugar. Pwede PowerPoint, etc. And then, I ask them to share it in their social, me social media platform. Ayan. So, yung iba since video ang ginawa nila, they shared it in, in YouTube. Yung iba sa tweet Uh, sa Twitter nila nilagay, yung iba sa Facebook. And then I told them that it will only run for two weeks and then after that, they have to pull it out. Kasi inisip ko rin yung, mm -hmm. yung data security, yung, yung ganun na baka kung sino yung kukuha ng idea nila. So, nung na-serve na yung, ano, yung output, so yun, I told them to delete it. Pero yeah, the, the good thing with sharing it in social media platforms is that Yung, yung friends nila na hindi aware ng kung ano pinagagawa nila nung pandemic, during the pandemic, pandemic with their classes, nakita nila ngayon na very productive yung, yung pen pala, you know, when they share their, their artwork through those platforms. So, yun. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you sa Tamar. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Roland. Si Sir Roland, uh, I, I noticed that as well, no? Part of uh, what we realized when we were working Uh, in helping teachers learn how to do some art. Talagang nag-uumpisa tayo na puro online quiz lang muna and then lecture. And then as we become more comfortable with technology, we start using discussion forums. Hindi siya yung parang first day magigamify ka na kagad or full media production na agad. It's also kaya magandang analogy yung learning to swim uh, in terms of uh, learning how to integrate technology as well. Um, kaya nga marami sa atin, di ba? If you really think about the analogy of swimming, it's a very rich analogy that really describes experience. You have people who are scared of technology. They will say, ay, ano, hindi ako marunong, takot ako, ganyan, di ba? And then some will, hindi, hindi talaga ako techie, may mga ganun. But for those who have attended swimming class, you know that anything can be learned, even yung, yung mga bagay-bagay na ganyan. Um, Pero let's go back to that, no? Siyempre, I think lahat sa tayo at some point where in we were forced to go into the period of substitution and augmentation. Uh, maybe some of you have already looked into modification and redefinition. Um, we often say it's it's not easy. It's a process. It's, it's part of the teaching practice. Pero um, as I was looking at some of you, we often hear... Marami sa atin, ano, ano yung na-feel? Feeling natin, kanina yung sabi ni, nung isang uh, nag-comment dito, medyo loaded, di ba? Loaded meaning, part of the load I, I know is not just about our work in teaching, teaching, creating, assessing, grading, connecting with students, monitoring, committee work, etc. The added layer is learning about the new technology and how to use it for instruction. So sometimes uh, we feel as if we're drowning, no? So it's a good thing. No? One thing that we need to think about when we're implementing technology is we take laps, no? When we talk about, di ba, pag nag-outing tayo, pag nagsiswimming tayo, hindi naman tayo laging pupunta sa malalim. Paminsan-minsan lang. 
Tama po ba? So, usually, what we do, we try to take a dip in the water, uh, mag-feel muna natin kung gaano siya kalalim. So, it's also part of uh, assessing ourselves how capable we are in swimming and also making sure to protect ourselves. Kung papansin po natin, when we go to resorts or mga hotels or even sa beach, always may lifeguard. So, what, what does that mean for our schools? It's also important that we have uh, support systems for our teachers and our learners when they feel overwhelmed with uh, with all of the things that they're doing. So there's something that can rescue them. Uh, what, do, what do you think are rescue activities? So sometimes mga break, mga informal activities, or maybe yung example natin of asking uh, Sir Roland to share his concrete experience we can also do that in our class in the sense that the world is now our playground. So we have access to so many resource speakers. So I hope some of you have tried inviting maybe experts or subject matter experts in your subject to share, come to your class and join and share their expertise. We can always find somebody, uh, an expert to share within our class and that would make for a more interesting experience for them. So what, one of the things we started doing um, with uh, I work uh, I work with Santiwaan Center for Learning. It's a it's a nonprofit organization working with out of school youth. No, so to keep these students motivated, part of it is we're looking for mentors, no, young mentors that will help them uh, with their schoolwork. No, so that's those are some of the things that we can think about. Now, when we talk about some are or learning how to integrate technology, that's the core of what we need to understand in managing online learning. So I hope uh, for any of here, anyone here or administrators, let's also consider that that um, when we assess uh, progress of our teachers, let's consider the laps that they're taking, no, the volume of work that they're doing, and also the level of activities. No, um, it can be a combination of um, maybe substitution lang and then uh, deeper. Um, but we have to give them time to learn from the experience as well. So when we think about some R or technology integration in the context of swimming, I'd like to share three or uh, four major items here. No? Looking at the situation that we have at the moment, the unique situation that we have this year, and also wellness, um, how we think about implementation and also mindset. So the first thing in terms of swim is uh, a situ our, our situation. So I, this is already something that's not a surprise to us, but we have uh, 1.38 billion uh, learners that are now learning online, impacted by the school closure and even growing. But of course that presents uh, different challenges. So one, in terms of the impact studies, no, they've seen studies na 25, learners retain 25 to 60 percent more material in online learning. Why? Because teachers have started not just doing lectures, but also showing video, sharing websites. They have um, more interactive or multimedia, richer media resources that help in retaining learning. And online learning requires at least 40 to 60 percent less time to learn in the sense that um, if you are engaging the more senses no, to learn. Um, mas, mas mabilis yung learning sa kanila. And of course, they can always go back to, to, the, to the lessons if at their own pace. No, they, co they can always go back to uh, the recordings that you have given or the references at their own time. So they have the ability to learn quicker. However, younger learners, of course, still need structured environment. No? So while our... our higher level high school college students may may have the ability to to be self motivated no self directed learners most of them at least uh, young learners still need structured environment in the sense that most of the activities are guided so hindi talaga pwede yung one size fits all when we have policies so usually when we talk to to schools we tell them let's consider uh, different kinds of policies based on the level of the learner and also recognizing the constraints. Uh, part of what we have been doing is also for, for schools with basic education students uh, to have more 
uh, communications with the parents who will be delivering courses. Part of it, we've even given some parenting um, webinars to parents to learn how to prepare their kids, uh, a little bit of support uh, basing from personal experience as well. Uh, Sir Roland, ready to buy ating raffle? <laughs> yung ating will. So yung yes, yes it's re ready. ready na ba? Okay. We have 30 so, minutes. 30 minutes na. Pwede na 30 tayo. Names. 30 My 30 names. names. Oh, we have 52 attendees. More chances of <laughs> more chances of winning tayo. Okay. So mm -hmm. part of it is yung challenges due to education loss. Yung sinasabing education loss due to digital divide. Right? So uh, it means that since yung iba wala silang ma maayos na internet connection, hindi naman one is to one yung laptop or computer sa bahay, nahihirapan talagang mag-catch up. I know that there are schools na uh, even DepEd, no, they, they give out modules simply because walang, walang connectivity, walang device. So they're even estimating in some cases no, a year's worth of uh, uh, lag no, yung some of our learners being behind. So Part of the struggle is also negotiating online identities, no? So, alam naman natin yung the way we present ourselves online is sometimes a bit different from how we interact with other people face to face. And part of what I'm seeing now, even with my kids, is how uh, they present themselves online, how they protect their identity as well. I think that's also a challenge. There are a lot of um, predators online. And more importantly, mental health issues. No, so I, I'm constantly hearing my kids and even their friends talk about uh, being stressed with all the homework and uh, meeting all these expectations, but also um, being able to do all of these activities. And it's also something that uh, teachers share. So my question is, um, I, I invite anyone here to share. So. We'll, we'll do a, a raffle and when your name is called, please share one challenge, one challenge that you have encountered and then for, for the winner. Um, I'm going to stop sharing so para may, may excitement naman tayo ng konti. Can you share? Okay, stop sharing. Sir Roland, can you share your, our wheel of names? Sir Roland, yan. So, pwede pang humabol yeah. yung iba, ah. <laughs> okay na, click na. Game. So, ready, ah, yung matatawag Game. sa sagot, ah. <laughs> okay. Yay, <Hello>. congratulations. <laughs> Oy, may ganun pa. Si Michelle at Yensa. Are you there? Is, will she be able to speak? See Michelle or just type in the QA. Don't type lang. You cannot, okay. You cannot. Okay, Michelle, to keep your price. Can you post um share please any challenges that you have uh noticed uh with your learners, also personal challenges you have experienced uh in the past year no while in teaching. Okay. So yan, meron tayong winner. Mag-draw pa kaya tayo ng isa para dalawa sila, Sir Roland. Irino po na si ma'am. Yes. Miss Michelle, ah, please just share uh, your experience. Okay, so next po. Okay, next. Okay, Diomedes, Benas. Okay. So please post uh, sa ating live Q&A. Um, so the question is, uh, what challenges have you faced in, in the pandemic and also any challenges you've noticed for from your students as well? Okay, so thank you. Yan, so meron tayong makukuhang COVID care kit. Okay, so let me share again my screen. Yeah. Okay. 
So to continue, um, we think about wellness. No, I I, I commend Lasal Das Marinas. No, because they I think wellness has been at the forefront of uh, our focus even at the beginning of the school year. No considering wellness of our learners or wellness of our teachers and that's I think very important uh, as we were starting this no so um, I was thinking about uh, a lot you know since we we are very alienated from our students we can't talk to them that much and communicate with them on a regular basis it's very challenging at the moment uh, what are the things that we can uh, look out for in terms of the changes in behavior of students when we interact with them no so if the students are having problems uh, in class or or how they present online so maybe if you call them out they become irritable short tempered there's a sudden deterioration in the quality of work they begin turning assignments late they become disrespectful in posts they stop responding to emails or, or negative in work no? or unusual behavior. So sometimes yan, mga very negative behavior, discussion posts, contents are bizarre, fantastical, paranoid. Uh, they seem to be out of touch with reality. So these are some signs that um, they might be having problems. As we know, what you see in them in during class is just one part of their reality. So they might be uh, having other difficulties and these are some signs no, that will alert us and we hope that um, school administrators and also us can also refer services no, some of the access that both students and teachers need so one is um, even before the start I know I, I think the school years to start uh, term has just started so pre-enrollment services um, Help the, helping them prepare everything that they need before starting in class, uh, addressing any of concern, mental health education. I know we've had uh, pro providing some links to students about how to deal with stress, fatigue, uh, depression, anxiety, you know, uh, crisis services. You know, maybe if we can provide uh, even the ones from the government or NGOs, um, crisis or uh, suicide hotlines that they can call or self-help services, no? If we have um, self-paced courses that we can create online uh, that they can access if they need any help for students with disability, no? So um, some access to uh, tools, especially for those with reading uh, problems or hearing problems, maybe some capabilities that will allow them to still continue learning online and counseling services. I know uh, some uh, some universities, some schools have this capability, um, and also teachers do the same. Um, I I also commend the school where my kids go to. No, they have this very well structured counseling service. So uh, there was a time that I even consulted with uh, with the teacher asking uh, with the counselor like, can you help me better support my my daughter? She seems to be struggling, so we have this kind of conversation, and that's very important uh, because as much as um, we see them online, we don't know really what's going on, at least with their interactions, because they have their own uh, chats also with their friends. So having something like this is also very helpful to them. And of course, it's uh, we need to remember that sometimes it's OK to not be OK, and uh, for us to acknowledge that is already very helpful. So it's important that we also create spaces where people can talk about their feelings, talk about their struggles, and to know that they're understood and supported. So this is not just for students, but also for our, our teachers and our administrators as well. Uh, I think emotional leadership at the moment is uh, a much more important um, consideration for the times that we are in now. So part of it is when we do implementation, so we're moving on to learning how to swim in 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 these times right uh, implementation so let's think about what are the things that we we can do so one thing that i've noticed um, with with the many activities that stu teachers are doing no? so we need to really think about not just preparing lesson plans but thinking about it from the perspective of experience because um, when we, if you remember in classroom, classroom management is 
learning experience is really relegated to the classroom. So everything that we can manage, we can we can control inside the classroom. But because our classes are remote, we have to think about the interaction, every interaction that the students experience when they learn. So it becomes now a combination of instructional or pedagogical design and the user experience. And that makes for what we call learner experience design. So learner experiences design, yeah, is creating learning experiences that enable the learner to achieve the desired learning count outcome in a human-centered and goal-oriented way. So especially for us who take for us who have taken um, CTP classes, so like CTP courses, Eduk 101, this is not really something new to us, right? But when you talk about learning experience design, we're just looking at it from a different perspective, but essentially most of the pedagogical principles are there. So what are the features of learning experience design? So it's a holistic and interdisciplinary approach. No? So interdisciplinary in the sense that we also look at technology, uh, usability in designing uh, the learning activities for our learners. And we want, want to make the learning journey enjoyable, engage, engaging, relevant and informative. And it's experiential. So almost uh, all of our activities now are really active learning mode and experiential mode, right? So it takes into account the realities of learners, including the environment that they are in. So one thing that we would like to highlight that is the core of learning experience design is a concept. So you can do this probably separately in, in your classes. There's something that's called the try not to yawn challenge. Okay, so in try not to yawn challenge, so, titingin tayo ng pictures. Maswerte, no? Kasi hindi tayo naka-zoom. So, hindi ko makikita yung mga face. Ilan lang yung mga naka-on dito, eh. So, usually, what, what I do in, in sessions, we, we stare at an image like this and then try to feel. So, if you have... <laughs> umihilik. Parang umihilik na si Sir Paul. Parang napansin ko na agad. So, if you have the feeling na parang medyo... Uh, nag-iiba na yung pakiramdam na parang ayun, parang gusto nyo na mag-shesta. Huwag muna, please. <laughs> Wag muna. So, yung exercise na to is an exercise that demonstrates daw na kapag when you're looking at pictures of people yawning, di ba parang hihikab ka din? It's actually an evidence that Empathy is built in into our system. So yung mga hindi humikab, sabihin hindi kayo empathic, na no? wala kayo empathy. Pero ibig sabihin, it's hardwired into our our system as human beings to empathize. So yun yung isang example of uh, showing empathy daw. So what's empathy really? We often hear about it, but what does it mean? Teka, I hope you hear the sound. Ha? Let me know if you're if you're able to hear the volume. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay, let me try that again. Huh? Okay. And I will start again. ...of empathy. We all live in our okay. own version of reality. A reality that is limited by our senses, our temperament, and our own experiences. It is the only reality we will ever truly know, but it is crucial to our personal development, our relationships, and to society itself that we make the effort to try and experience other people's realities as well. This is done through empathy. Simply stated, empathy is an active attempt to understand another person's perspective, their emotions, and in essence, their reality. We are social animals and our ability to communicate and understand each other's emotional states is key to maintaining our relationships. So it is little wonder that the ability to empathize is hardwired directly into our brains. One area that assists in this process is the right supermarginal gyrus, which helps us to distinguish our own emotional state from that of another person and plays a key role in our ability to observe and assess what other people 
people are experiencing. Studies from Neuron Science Journal suggest that we have systems of mirror neurons in our brains that cause us to mimic the actions of others. That is why when we see someone yawn, we will often yawn in reply. And when we observe someone experiencing joy or pain, we experience the same sensation to a certain extent. But these reactions are primarily driven by subconscious reflexes. In order to be truly empathic, you have to actively think beyond yourself and your own concerns. You can develop this empathic skill by practicing some simple habits. Be observant of others. We tend to spend the majority of our day dwelling on ourselves, caught up in our own daily routines and digital distractions. But taking the time to observe others around you is a good first step in developing your empathy. Watch and wonder. Try to focus on the person's state of being rather than categorizing or labeling them. Ask yourself, what kind of day are they having? How are they feeling? Challenge yourself to genuinely care about their well-being. Curiosity about others is the first step to expanding your empathy. Use active listening. During a conversation, especially a heated one, most people formulate the response before the other person even finishes their statement. This form of communication is more verbal combat than an exchange of ideas or opinions. Avoid this reflex by slowing down. Rather than rushing to reply, take a moment to consider the other person's statement. Ask follow-up questions to better understand what the speaker intended. Try to understand their emotional state and the deeper motivations behind their statement. What life experiences led them to their current world? View. Remember, you don't need to share someone's opinion in order to understand it and acknowledge it. And listening will help inform and expand your own opinion. Open up. Learning more about other people's experiences is a key element to seeing the world through someone else's eyes. But it is also important to open up about your own feelings and experiences. Empathy is a two-way street that at best is built upon mutual understanding. Through a combination of uncovering the deeper motivations of someone else's position and expressing our own underlying concerns, we often discover a shared commonality, even with those who hold different beliefs than ours. Through the practice of keeping an open mind, empathy helps us challenge prejudice, find commonality, and expand our moral universe. Without it, we are apt to label people outside our circle as the other, the problem, or the enemy. These labels draw lines in the sand that prevent us from moving forward or growing. It cuts us off from the realization that the human experience is a shared experience. We have much more in common than we think and are really just seeing small variations of the same reality. Okay. So I hope that's, the import that's something that we can share also with our learners. No, yung ganong klase na we have opportunities. No, so when we have debates or discussions in class, but also for our leaders when we have discussions with our teachers, our parents, and students. No, in terms of their our concerns or their concerns, mm -hmm. it's very important that we see uh, use uh, empathy as a lens. No, when we have our interactions, especially now, especially even in social media. <laughs> so how is this important? So part of it is when we think about all our learners, we have to think about um, their tasks, that the tasks that they're trying to do, what influences them, their feelings, their pain points, their overall goals when they're taking your course. So part of uh, things that we also consider their internet connection, their skills, their abilities, um, we also have to look at parents as parents as their co-teachers when we design their learning experience, no? depending on the levels. So for uh, lower level students, we have to think about uh, do they have parents who can help them or uh, guardians who can help them in their task? What devices do they have? So this is one example of um, uh, a student no? based on a, a, a teacher's interview with the student. No? He sees this is an example of uh, this is a, a, what we call an empathy map. No? It helps us understand uh, the concerns of students. We don't have to do that all the time. We can do it at the start of the school year or if we're developing a program. No? So leaders can also do this when, we, when you're planning to create uh, or identify courses, etc. So these are important things that we can do for planning. So just to share an example, this is um, what we call a uh, learner journey map no so we use our our understanding of a of a graduate student's persona and then identify their tasks so for example in this case uh, we have a graduate student so ano yung task niya to be able to use the lms to learn via blended learning so we identified the stages no they should be able to log in enroll in the course view their lessons 
do their assignments and view their grades. So ano yung mga tasks involved in each stage? Ano yung mga touch points? Are they going to use the LMS? Do they get their accounts from the teachers or the IT department? No. So something having something like this is an important tool for the school no, to help in uh, designing the learning experience for uh, for the students. It's also a helpful tool for teachers or even uh, departments no, when they plan different kinds of activities for, for their students. So it's actually uh, an exercise that will allow you to collaborate and plan and really understand the roles we will play in supporting the learning of our students. Of course, um, blended learning is something we it, we already know blended before is really just um, about whether we go online or offline, right? But now it's about synchronous or asynchronous. Yun yung nakikita natin. But I, I hope we also uh, recognize that blended learning also involves different pedagogical approaches. So like you can blend project-based learning with service learning concepts, no? So I've had experience where we uh, project-based yung learning. No? I used to teach a subject called internet marketing, so project-based siya, pero combined with a service learning component in the sense that they have to reach out to a small and medium enterprise to help build uh, that small and medium enterprises uh, uh, brand image online. So it's authentic learning that's project-based but also service learning. And then of course we're using digital tools. So it's it's a challenge that the challenge there is learning how to design the entire course, not just lesson by lesson. And also looking at what are the important competencies that students need to uh, develop and practice. And from there, you are able to decide you know, what content should you include in the course and be able to break away from, you know, yung outline that's really just based on a textbook or a curriculum. Uh, I mean, uh, just a, a textbook or a book. Yeah, so finally, motivation. I think motivation plays a very, very important part. So we know that when a student is engaged, they're high, they're high performers, they're innovative, they're efficient, they're, they're, they're fun to have. When a student is very engaged, it's, it's great to have. But of course, not everyone will be engaged. But if, if a student is not engaged, di ba, mema, ang tawag natin doon, tama ba, mema lang. <laughs> or... Wala lang, ganun, minimal effort, little passion, wala talaga, nakakapanghinayang. The problem is sometimes you even have students who are actively disengaged. Yan, late, absent, um, nanggugulo pa, di ba, minsan yung nag-distracts na from other classmates. No? So, so we have to recognize that we have different learners. So why is uh, engagement very important? No, So we need to learn to design for engagement because it's, it's fact it's an important factor in, in our class dynamics and also in student outcomes. And we have to recognize that there are two kinds of uh, motivation. No? So one is extrinsic. So we do something because uh, we're motivated to perform because there will be a reward, diba? may price, or magandang grades, or may punishment. Diba? Walang, walang internet from the parents, walang price, ganyan. Or intrinsic motivation is for the sake na for the sake of learning or for the sake of doing something. Extrinsic, pwede rin punishment, di ba? So, mapapahiya, so iba-iba. So, we have to think about what motivates our learners. And motivation is a continuum, no? We have to recognize that it's a continuum, but we can also plan for motivation. And it's normal for us to expect that motivation for kids usually starts extrinsically. Uh, School-centered in the sense that we provide yeah, tangible rewards in terms of grades, avoid negative consequence, right? But uh, papasok yung learner-centered based on how the teacher designs the learning activities. Um, yeah, six approval from the teacher, compares performance with peers. You know, what are activities uh, that push them towards learner-centered motivation? and with the desire to achieve learning goals and finally get them into learner driven intrinsic motivation no they're learning for the love of learning they're happy to learn more as a skill or attaining knowledge so naturally di ba tayo subject na we're intrinsically interested to learn about something 
So kahit hindi may effort si teacher, mag-aaral tayo because we're interested. So what we want is for any subject is to push the students no, from an extrinsic motivation to an intrinsic uh, motivation. And then we have to recognize nga that there are different levels of engagement. So when a student is has high engagement, there's high attention, and then there's high commitment, diba? So part factors that involve here if, if, is the, if the relationship with the teacher is also very high, so there's also high engagement. But yun nga, meron tayong spectrum of students, right? They're very engaged. Nakikita ko to sa class ng, ng kids ko eh. There are students na online, na they turn on their videos, tapos nag very responsive sila sa, te sa teacher nila, they smile, parang they're very happy. And then you have strategic compliance, do whatever the teacher asks. But you have retreatism, no, hindi nagre-respond, naka-off ang video. So you have, we have to identify this uh, and try to think of ways to convert those who are in the lower levels into more engaged learners. Okay, so what are some? I know there are a lot of engagement boosters. Uh, for those who are, I've seen uh, in the schools are participating in this webinar, some of you are already using NEO, some of you are using other tools, uh, Office 365, etc. No? So there's so many engagement uh, boosters for learning. Uh, I'll just identify two of them, no? automation and gamification. So what's automation? This is actually a tool for teachers. So sa teachers, it's a concept that allows the schools to make the learning more flexible and personalized without having to burden the teachers with so much effort and time. Because yung mga repetitive tasks can be done automated. So what can you automate? You can automate communications, you can provo uh, automate the providing of feedback, and you can automate motivation. So what? how is it possible? Because if you're handling six subjects, no, if I remember six subjects at around 40, around 200, no, maybe around 200 students at the same time, how can we communicate on a one-to-one -one basis, right? So some automation actions that we can have, like in Neo LMS, no, um, in terms of access, no, depending how a student performs, assessments can be hidden or shown to a user, lessons can be shown or locked, assessments, no, awards can be given or uh, they can be out automatically joined into a group or they can receive messages depending on how they move along the course. So even if you are managing a class of 40, depending on how they score in activities or how they are moving along the learning, they will have different, slightly varied experiences without really burdening the teacher. So one important activity uh, capability of automation for let's say the student has not been accessing the platform for the last seven days you don't the teacher doesn't have to check they can immediately receive no? the system can automatically send a notification to check in on the student right so it's possible to just create a tool in in neo no? for example uh kapag seven days na siyang hindi naga access yung student makaka-receive siya na dear Roel, dear Roel, hi, I've noticed that you've not accessed, kamusta ka na, I hope you're doing well, and you don't have to do it manually. But you have a capability to make students feel that you're really checking in on them. So you can automate also to give feedback. In what sense? You can automate the sending of messages um, when they perform in a certain way. So if they get a perfect score, there's a different message. If they get a low score or a passing score, no? You can award badges. If they get a perfect score, para bang automatic accelerated na to the more advanced modules. If they're struggling, uh, a module can be automatically released to them for additional supplementary material, right? So these are things, if you notice, there are different, in this screenshot, there are different things that happen depending on how the learner scores. And then, you have also the ability to automate to motivate. So as we mentioned, they receive badges, they receive them. Finally, gamification. So some of you have heard what gamification is. No, it's different from just playing a game. So when we talk about gamification, it's actually an approach where we motivate our students by using the concept of game design. 
So shout out kay Sir Roland Ruben. If you want, Sir, you know, lundi si Sir Roland, no? Sir Roland gives a very nice uh, gamification workshop if you want to learn more about gamification, but I'm just introducing the concept to you, no? So it's a goal of maximizing enjoyment and engagement by capturing the interest of the learners. So why gamification? Because it turns the fear into fun. Parang, ay, ayoko nito or takot akong itry ito. Okay, so it gives them the challenge, uh, gives them a challenge and give them a reason to learn. So they turn yung, do I have to, into I want to. Diba tayo kanina, do I have to reply my price? O sige, I want to reply na. Yan. And then of course, it, it, it inspires and reactivates. So what makes um, learning engage, uh, games engaging? Because it's fun, right? So, parang we can also be designers of fun. And how do we do that? No, let me share an example. So, this is a case of um, actually a brand case. So, there's this. Um, I think this is Volkswagen in Germany. So, yung ang challenge nila, they want to teach people certain behaviors. So, they want to teach people to drive below the speed limit. Napakahirap, de ba? So, sure, karamihan kung wala namang huli, drive tayo beyond the speed limit. So the target scenario is we want people to observe the speed limit. So get people to drive at or below the speed limit by making it fun to do. Hindi huli. <laughs> so making it fun. So please watch this video. Hi, I'm Kevin Richardson. I'm the winner of Volkswagen's Fun Theory Award. My idea was the speed camera lottery. Could we get people to uh, bathe the speed limit through fun? I really believe that fun can change human behavior for the better. And I was really thrilled to see that my idea, which started as a scribble submitted into this competition, uh, might even become reality. Speed of camera lottery would do two things. One, it would photograph uh, speeders, and give them a uh, citation, uh, and that money goes in a pot. But if you're obeying the law, your picture will also get snapped. You'll be entered into a lottery and win some of that money from those speeders. I always do the but I expect to win. Det är ju bra positiva grejer det där. Kör laden och känna deg, det är perfekt. So, yun nga, no? it's a challenge of knowing what motivates. Siyempre, naman tayo pwede mamigay ng pera lagi, di ba? So, we have to understand ano yung intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So, for example, um, we want the students to be more, to uh, participate in discussions more, di ba? So, we can think about online discussion forums, no? Kung konti lang yung nagpa-participate, um, we want students to interact more in discussion forums and replying to peers, so what we can do is make it more fun. So what one way to do that is gamifying the discussion forum. So yun yun. So why? How? How? When we talk about motivation in designing activities, it's important that we also recognize yung getting the students into something that's called the flow state. So syempre tayo, uh, when we're given up activities, in terms of the challenge, whether it's a low challenge or a high challenge, and our perceived ability to do something, kaya ba to or hindi kaya? So sinasabi natin, kung hindi siya challenging, tas hindi ko naman kaya, 
wala akong pakialam. So, di ba? Or, uh, mababa yung ability ko, pero mataas yung challenge. Of course, negative siya na there's high anxiety, there's worry. Pero if you go to um, think about how do we achieve the flow state, we have to think about um, improving their abilities. no? So, leading students into uh, the flow state. Paano ginagawa yun? How do you get them to have that ability? If you gamify, mas willing silang mag-try una, mas willing silang mag-try again para ma-achieve nila yung flow state na yon if they get rewards. So, I'm not saying that it can only be achieved through games. This is a very important, yung thinking about the flow state is also an important way to, important consideration when we design assessments, deadlines and activities also. Uh, but gamification can also help, no? So how is it done in NEO? So you add games, levels, activities, points, and badges. Now we won't go through all of them. No? So basically, na, if they do an activity, they earn a point, and then they reach a certain level. So dito, warrior, elite, master, grandmaster. No? So syempre, meron ng uh, natutuwa ka na, di ba? Yung mga naglalaro ng Mobile Legends will know this. No? Yung anak ko, she loves uh, to play Genshin Impact. So parang sinasabi niya, meron siyang, uh, hindi ko na alam ko anong tawag doon something points no so may my certain sense of satisfaction so yun nga they earn points depending on how they move to certain activities no so if some if i earn a lot of points for something i will also make the extra effort because i think i will be rewarded so um, that's a way to also motivate them then we can also design badges no inside neo na customize siya when they achieve certain uh, levels or certain activities no so it keeps them somehow a little bit more motivated so yung ex, uh, extrinsic motivation or uh, social component they see they see themselves no nasa ako sa leaderboard no ano nang level ko uh, you can even do team based leaderboards no you can break them out into teams no so yun yung maganda um, nagkakaroon sila ng ano and i think Sa NEO, you can also do this site-wide. So, I think ang nakakatuwa, si, just to share, no, chinismis ko na ang lasal. So, when they train their uh, teachers, they gamified it for all and nakikita sa leaderboard, sino yung department na pinakamasipag sa training uh, na matataas ang points. So, even the department, nagtulong-tulungan sila no, para matapos nila yung mga training for the department and get recognition. So, that's that's a very good application for it, di ba? Lalo na very challenging ang training for teachers. So, of course, you it's important that you also measure, no? Measure engagement. Are they logging in more? Are they doing more attempts? Are they spending more time? Are they putting in more uh, better assessments? And what you, you can find that in sa NEO, no, you, you are able to also see individual activities. So yon in every job that must be done, that's why it's important to have a little bit of fun, sabi nga ni Mary Poppins, right? So yun naman yung uh, purpose ng motivation. So finally, uh, I want to wrap up. Always I like to end about the growth mindset. It's very important, uh, I think, for me. Education for educators, growth mindset is a very, very important concept. We might have heard about this, right? Uh, when you have a fixed mindset, failure is a limit, is an indication of the limit of your activities or, or your abilities. Parang, di ako magaling sa mayaw, di ako, marunong, di ako magaling sa math. Yung mga ganyan, di ba? Dahil nung elementary ka, isang beses, bumagsak ka sa math. So, feeling mo na hindi ka na marunong, yung ganon. It's it's growth my uh, it's fixed mindset. Pero pag sinabi natin growth mindset, when you fail, it's an opportunity to grow, and anything can be learned as long as you try hard enough and you want to try new things. Uh, internally, hindi tayo always fixed mindset sa lahat ng bagay. We can have a fixed mindset on some things and growth mindset, but it also affects our the way we relate to our students. Uh, naalala nyo yung meron dyan, ay mga taga ano yan, itong batang to, pasaway to, hindi pumapasok, ganyan, ganyan. So, hindi na siya magbabago. And that somehow makes, uh, parang pinipredict mo na yung behavior ng student, di ba? But if a teacher has a growth mindset, no? Pwede kasing if a teacher believes in growth mindset and applies it in the teaching practice, 
you will provide opportunities for the student to learn more, no? Hindi porke bumagsak sa isang sa, sa isang quiz, hindi na. Ang maganda when we have online tools, hindi na mahirap para sa atin to provide more opportunities, no? As long as they want to do it, uh, and learning is their goal, no? Effort makes me stronger. So what does this mean? Bumagsak, may rubric tayo. Ma'am, baba ng grade ko. Baka naman pwede mong itaas. What's the answer? What you can say is, try again. Nakita mo yung rubric, you improve your work. And if you want to get that grade, you have an opportunity to, to try again. So that really sends a very powerful message to, to the learner, right? Uh, that they can achieve more if they're willing to try and that we are willing to support their effort. So I hope let's think about growth mindset, not just in our personal life, but in how we also treat our students. Uh, I know meron tayong mga studyanteng kilala, no? meron tayong preconceived notion about them uh, na galito yung behavior nila. But we can always say that people will always have the ability to change and change for the better, right? So I would like to end with the growth mindset pledge. Um, this is for everyone, something you can also share with your, your class at the beginning, no? especially in, in difficult times. No? I hope you can read together with me a growth mindset classroom pledge. <laughs> so every day I will try my best. I will not quit. I will not rest until my, gra my brain has grown a bit and I have learned how to do it. If I fail, I will be okay. I will just try a different way. I will just, I will say I just can't do it yet because I have a growth mindset. So I hope it's something you can share and I hope um, we see each other someday swimming in the pool. Uh, always remember, yeah, swim. So thank you, thank you De La Salle, thank you Sir Pat, Sir, Sir Well. Sir Paul, Sir Roland for inviting me. I hope you learned something today. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Arlene, for the great presentation. Yeah, so if you have questions, po, you yeah. may type in your questions in the chat box. Meron pa tayong ano, raffle time na, yung mga magtatanong. <laughs> Okay, sige po. Sir Roland, labas mo na yung tambiolo. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you po sa CDBS. Oh, what can we do to help students with growth, uh, fixed mindset? Mm, mm -hmm. So usually kasi, di ba, when you have a fixed mindset, may belief. So ano yung we have to identify? Sino ba to si ma'am? Can you give me your name, ma'am, para may price? <laughs> CDBS. Sir Paul, paki reach out na lang sila. Uh, merong belief eh. So, I'm sure we've encountered that, di ba? Na ako, personally yun. Magang yung struggle ko yan na uh, I, grade 4, may pulang mark na math. So, parang tumanim na sa utak sa akin na hindi talaga ako magaling sa math, di ba? Tapos, every time na may math sabi, ay, ito na naman tayo. So it's a belief that was triggered by something. So um, for us teachers or even parents or everyone, no, parang we try to uh, change whatever triggered that belief. So we can ask the student, parang kung meron siyang, ano, no, parang di ko kaya to, what made you believe na hindi mo kaya? Let's try to unroot, uh, let's try to uncover the root of that belief. And that's how we can try to change it. So Sir Tambiolo na, Sir Roland game. Can we, uh, no, uh, I'll, I'll post here. Please uh, post your name po so we can give you the prize. So Sir Glen Glenmar, Miss, Miss or Mr. Yan. Glenmar Biscara. Yan. So ilan now? One, two, three, four. So, six pa, kasi ten to eh. <laughs> yes, it's true. Ayan, Miss Marianelia. Game na ba? Ayan. Marianelia Garland. 
5, 6. Apat na lang, Sir Roland. Okay, Carl Albert Lozada. Yan. Tatlo na lang. Oo. Si Ma'am Cecilia. Congrats. <laughs> Dalawa na lang Sir Roland para doon sa ating care kit tapos grand prize. And, yes. And when, when right third, yes, repute actually. Okay, Clarence Riaso. Sige. Oh, ma'am, si Dr. Corpus. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats, ma'am. Uh, Ilana, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. Nandro mo na. Okay. Si Edel, Christy, William Moore. Okay, so ang, <laughs> ang grand prize natin, 500 pesos na uh, gift card for Lazada. Pang shopping, sakto, March 27, di ba? Tsaka 4-4 sa sale. So marami na mabibili yung 500. Sige, Sir Roland, game. <laughs> Wow, suerte. Si Sir Tirso. Nandiyan ka ba, Sir? Rea ka naman. <laughs> Rea ka naman, Sir. Mr. Tirso Zapata. So, congratulations. Ikaw ang nanalo ng 500 load sa uh, gift card sa Lazada. So, you have to please uh, send us your details, no, your name. Uh, para we can have the kits sent to you and then your mobile phone. So thank you for sana napangiti kayo ng api mga multi prices. I hope you learned something today. Thank you so much for the invitation and um, I know it's a difficult time but uh, I commend all of you teachers for always trying your best. Kayo po mga sa, sa mga bayani ng bansa natin. No? So please uh, I pray that you God sustain you and you keep your strength and remember that you are not alone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Arlene, and uh, thank you as well for the raffle prize uh, for the raffle prizes that you gave to our uh, participants today. So, um, Sir Ruel, uh, can we proceed to the awarding of certificate? Because Ma'am Arlene already answered the question that was posted in the chat box. Yes, Ma'am Grace, please proceed. Yes. Um, again, Ma'am Arlene, maraming maraming salamat po for sharing your knowledge and expertise on um, managing online learning. So, on behalf of the LSUD, uh, let me present this certificate of uh, uh, appreciation to you, Ma'am Arlene Awayan, for being our resource speaker in the webinar on managing online learning held this 24th day of March 2021 via MS Teams, signed by our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez, and our um, Chancellor and, and President, uh, Brother Gus L. Bucare. So maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Arlene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Po. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Ma'am Marlene. Thank you so much po. 
Thank you, Paul. Welcome, Paul. All right, so I would like to uh, present your certificate here. Uh, it was presented late. But, but anyway, maraming salamat po ulit sa uh, pag, uh, papaunlak niyo po sa aming invitation for joining us this afternoon. And of course, Ms. Grace, salamat po. And um, at this point, yes, you'd also like to thank our participants for joining us this afternoon. We were uh, blessed by, of course, um, the virtual presence of um, Ma'am Arlene. This afternoon engagement was indeed very uh, productive and uh, we were able to absorb a lot of learnings from the presentation. So at this point, muli, marami pong salamat sa ating mga participants. We would like to thank our speaker and on behalf of the organizing team, we would like to thank um, the participating school. So I, once again, I would like to um, Make a rundown. So, pakita lang po natin ulit yung mga participating schools po natin. I hope um, you will be joining us again on our next webinar. Okay. So, we are already at our eight. Today is the eighth webinar. So, we still have two webinar to go. And later on, I'll be showing you the schedule. So once again, thank you very much po to our speaker and like to thank once again all our participating schools, the administrator, faculty members, and staff. On behalf of Dallasal University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, would also like to thank, of course, uh, the people behind this event, the technical support team of the DLSUD Center for Innovative Learning Programs headed by Sir Paul Notorio and the members of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee headed by Engineer Rizadi de Armas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology and Dr. Pat Alcartado, Dean College of Education through the guidance of our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Maraming salamat po. So before we finally end the program, here are some important announcements and reminders. So again, mark your calendar for, as mentioned earlier, we still have two uh, upcoming webinars and the next one will be on April 14. All right, so we'll see each other again and this time we'll be talking about on April 14, we're talking about online laboratory courses across various disciplines. This is a very interesting uh, topic. And then on April 28, which is our last, okay, our last um, webinar will be an online practicum thesis field study and best practices so we look forward to see all of you again of course um, as we proceed with our uh, two more webinars okay now for the access code so again kindly access the lsudace.edu.org go to courses click enroll and input the access code especially for this webinar it's giii dash UDKS. So you can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or to the assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. And if you have uh, encountered any problems about your registration and your e-certificate, please email webinars at dlsud.ph. All right. So I think we're, we're done with our activity for today and uh, we're so happy and glad to have all of you. So once again, marami pong salamat for joining us this uh, afternoon and we see we look forward to see all of you next time. That ends our online engagement for today. Again, marami pong salamat. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Stay safe, everyone. See you next time. <music>